All right, so in three, two. Good evening. I now call to order the Equity Committee meeting with the Equity Advisory Council for Thursday, September 8th, 2022. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee and council members, members will state their name before speaking. Ms. Fass, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Scott. Present. Dr. Hager. Ms. Jose. Ms. Rowe. Present. Ms. Stalewski. Present. Ms. Hassan. Present. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Fast, please call the names of those staff members on the Equity Committee attending today's meeting. Dr. Yarbrough. And Mr. Handy. Present. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Fast, if you could please call the role of the Equity Advisory Council members participating in today's call. Abir Shanawi, Elena McCall, Mikkel, Mackel, Alejandra Ivanov, Bianca Crockett, present, Clifford Collins, Denim Fisher, Donna Sibley, present. Aaron Sullivan, Frank Dunlap, Javeen Hardin, present, Juliana Valencia Banks, Heather Denmeyer, present. Oh, thank you, Miss Valencia. Heather Denmeyer, Jackie Brewster, present. Jane Lee. This is Leslie Weber for PTA Council. Thank you. John Bailey. Present. Kevin Jennings. Oh, Mr. Bailey, was that you? Yes. Thank you. Kevin Jennings. Kristen Nielsen. Lene Williams. Oh, thank you. Lene Williams. Lauren Tillman. Present. Lisa Norton. Manny Henson. Marquetta McLean. Present. Maria Lau. Oh, thank you. Maria Lowry. Present. Marlena Pearcell Colleton. Megan Stewart Sicking, Michelle Stansberry, Monica Sample, Sam Tillman. Present. Thank you. Shane Jensen. Present. Sherelle Jones. Present. Solomon Davis. So Sina Tillahoon, Tiffany Stith. Present. And thank you, Zamira Simpkins. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. And I would just like to um, note, are there any board members who are participating in today's call that um, we're not named. Okay, and are there any um, staff members participating in today's meeting that were not named? Great. Okay. All okay. right. Uh, 
Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Donna Sibley. Manny Henson just texted me and said that he is trying to get in. I know his name was called, so I don't know what his problems are. Hi, Mr. Corns. Would you be able to assist? Or Mr. Handy? And Lena Polite was not called, and I'm here. Okay. Miss Fast, did you get that, um, Miss Nina? Yes, ma'am. I will mark Miss Polite as present. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Miss Polite. Anyone else? Great. All right. Thank you all, all right. for Ms. joining Scott. us. Yes. I'm sorry, Miss mm -hmm. Scott, Miss Fast. So I heard um, Elena McCall, uh, another advisory council member, is also trying to join. It sounds like she might have had the same issue with having the app downloaded so i am trying to assist her in getting in um so i think we can proceed but i'm gonna see if i can get uh miss mckell uh to join as well she's trying to join okay thank you all right well. so it looks like the first item of new business is a presentation on the equity advisory council planning group and updates and for that i call on miss stiff Good evening, everyone. Um, so my name is Tiffany Stith, and I will be presenting the update this evening for the Equity Advisory Council Planning Group. Um, now the question is, do I have control of this slide presentation? Uh, no, ma'am, all you have to do is tell me next slide, please, and I'll advance for you, okay? Gotcha, okay, all right, thank you. All right, so next slide, please. Um, before we do get started, I do want to say we're happy to answer any questions that you have, but if you could hold those questions until the end of the presentation, I'd appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and get started. So currently on your screen, what you see is the planning group who our current members are. We have a total of 18 members for this planning group, and you'll notice that we have a variety of stakeholders represented. So within this group, we have BCPS represented, we have central staff, we have school administrators and teachers. We also have TAB co-represented. There are the chairs of the five education advisories. We have parents as well as, and I'm really happy about this, we have students who are represented on this group, um, current BCPS students as well as alumni. So the planning group has worked across the summer to develop this plan of work that we are getting ready to talk about. Next slide, please. In tackling um, this work, the group came together and wanted to really talk about let's have some action and behind that also talk about what is it that we are trying to do. And so what we've done is develop a purpose statement and that is to increase the achievement, the access and opportunity by celebrating the diversity of our students through inclusive instruction and providing support but not just academic, but academic, social, and emotional support, as well as identification that creates, advocates for, and promotes a sense of belonging among the students. And we believe that this will put students on the path towards becoming independent, active, and engaged learners. Next slide, please. So we are coming from the perspective that diversity is not a tool to identify and predict student success or bar student achievement but instead diversity is an asset. Next slide, please. So we've developed five current top priorities that we'd like to talk about, and this is just where we are now. We do see this as kind of a living thing where priorities can change, but these are the five that we've identified so far. So the first one is academic achievement of marginalized students. The next is intersectionality and intersecting identities. So a framework of identities, understanding that different identities may have different needs. So you can have uh, an African-American female. She may have certain needs as an African-American, but then there's also she identifies as a female. So there's going to be different needs based on the fact that she's a female as well. A third would be a holding space for discussions mm -hmm. to be able to call in others into a safe space so that we're able to partner, for example, even having interracial pairs and advocate on behalf of the students. The fourth priority would be the recruitment and retention of teachers and academic assistants, considering our HBCUs as well as our PWIs with support programs for teachers of color. And our fifth priority 
is the behavior and consequences. There are currently disparities and consequences for black boys or males. And what is the impact of this exclusionary discipline on their academic achievement? Next slide, please. So what we've come up with is the idea of equity action groups. So what does that involve? That means we have these groups that will be working together and these groups are, are tiered in different ways. Can you click one more time, please, for the rest of the slide to come up? There we go. So we have the principal as the lead of the group within the school and then from that school we would also have a teacher or a staff member in addition to the school parent and then from outside of the school because we've talked about we do want this to be an interracial group and we also want the idea that we can pair or collaborate um, with another school as well we would partner with another school and we would have administration or someone a staff member appointed by administration as well as a parent from another school so this group is an interracial group and we would work in collaboration with existing groups or teams that support the students. So for example, um, we, if we talk about children in, pro in poverty, um, we know there are certain supports and services that they already receive. And so this group could work in collaboration with that organization or group that's already focused on children in poverty. Or if we talk about ELL students, same type of thing, that's a group that has been already identified and has some support systems in place. But if you're talking about maybe students with learning disabilities and children who are displaying symptoms so that they're not yet identified as having a learning disability, they may not have an existing group or support that's in place for them. But that student does need to get to the point to where they have the learning disability identified and start receiving services. So the equity action group could be um, could be a group that would help to identify um, that the student has needs and help that student to get the support. And then the last bit as far as kind of hierarchy is that uh, the executive directors would oversee these groups for their respective areas. Next slide, please. The other point of um, discussion that came up a lot in our meetings was tools. So what is it that we can say and what is it that we can do if we encounter situations related to equity? How do we explain equity in a consistent manner such that it's in alignment with policy 0100? Um, even understanding that everyone may not receive that message. So we have things in place that exist already, such as referring to the MSDE Equity and Excellence Plan, we also have referring to the BCPS strategic plan, our compass and our pathway to excellence. Those are existing. And then in addition now with this work, what you see being bolded are the things that we can start to use as well. So the use of our purpose statement or even developing a handbook more like a brochure that's going to highlight the best practices um, for equity and the use of the equity action groups. So this is where we are. Um, this is what we've come up with thus far um, with our planning. Uh, next slide, please. And so that really concludes the, the presentation. It was just a quick update to bring you up to date with where we are, what our thoughts were. So we thank you for your time and attention. And big thank you, of course, to the group members who have participated in this with their time and their effort in this important work. And that concludes the presentation. So at this time, are there any questions or thoughts? Thank you very much. That was uh, very impressive. And um, I appreciate uh, all of the committee members who poured into this and um, put this together. It was a really, really very well done presentation. Um, any, uh, anyone that has any questions, board members or committee members, um council member please feel free to put your questions in the chat or your name in the chat so i can call on you and you can ask your question um i could start off with a question i heard you say develop an equity handbook that sounds um very interesting to me i'd like to hear more about that i guess your plans for that and if you have a timeline or anything so I do have handbook in there, but I think it would be more of a brochure if we consider something that's condensed. And the idea is that we're trying to capture best practices. Um, so again, it's not where we're reinventing the wheel. Um, and so that's the that's the main idea is being able to capture that feedback. Doug, I don't know if you have a, 
um, comment on timeline because I'm not familiar with how long something like that, I guess, would take to put together. Um, nope. So uh, no comment on timeline per se. Um, just want to. So the way I see this document, it would be it would. And we need to discuss this, I guess, in more detail with the council. It would really be a council document as opposed to like a BCPS. Issue document, if that makes sense. So with the. I guess it comes into a question about the the relationship between like the, the how independent the council is, if you will. So. I guess in brief, I'll say that timeline will be mainly driven by the council. Um, and then I think we need to clarify again, like who, um, I guess who owns the document, so to speak. So I think as far as like developing the content, a draft, um, I see the council taking the lead on that. Um, perhaps as a draft is developed, it's something we might be able to, you know, share with the committee, get some feedback before it's finalized. So uh, if that fits what the council has in mind, I think, you know, the draft can begin sooner than later. There are monthly meetings of the planning team, and then maybe we could have some some draft documents or language that we can share with the uh, board committee for some feedback. Okay, and ultimately, who would be the recipient of this brochure or um, I guess little handbook? So would this be something that would go out to like parents, uh, to teachers? Um, to schools, who would be the um, the ultimate audience? So this is my thought again, we're still meeting and so we have to really go through the details of all of this, but I would see this as being a document, for example, to assist uh, for parents, to help parents understand. Um, one of the things, for example, that came up in one of our meetings is like if this uh, um, an administrator presented um, the scenario of, you know, having to talk to a parent about with regards to this and and having some concerns. And so it's kind of like, well, I can say what I can say, but do we have something that could help support or drive this home, what it is that we're trying to do? And so um, that's where I would see that this brochure coming into place to help parents and community members understand what it is really that we're doing with the, with, with equity. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Did anyone else have any questions? Oh, it looks like Dr. Stitt put in the chat for those who are on the phone um, a resource that may be helpful. Maryland Task Force on Academic Equity and Excellence for Black Boys. Thank you for that. Ms. Scott, uh, may I reply to uh, Dr. Stitt's comment? Yes, please. So Dr. Stitt, thank you for that comment. Uh, just want to uh, reiterate, because this has been uh, major work within VCPS that I'm very excited about. So the report that Dr. Stitt's referring to, uh, there were uh, there's a pilot program associated with that, and Baltimore County Public Schools does have three schools that are part of the pilot, statewide pilot for that. Uh, that resource. Um, so we have that pilot and then we also have now um, mentoring for black boys in each of our middle schools. So um, again, thank you, Dr. Stitt, for for bringing that up. And I'm, I am excited about that work. And of course, you know, Ms. Scott and the other uh, committee members, we've uh, we actually presented to the, the equity committee. I presented a brief update on that at our last meeting. So yes, I think, you know, as we go forward, that's a, a certainly a resource we can look at for the advisory council. Uh, but yes, BCPS is, is certainly um, committed to, uh, you know, using that resource to improve outcomes for our, our black boys. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, oh, and it looks like uh, Ms. Merlina Parasol is present on the call. Okay. I didn't hear her name. I did, I don't know if she was here when her name was called. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Handy, is there um are there any other updates or anything else for the committee to review? Uh no, Miss Scott, that's all we have really. Uh just one. Uh, item I wanted to bring up now that we're here with the uh, committee and the council members. Again, the planning team has been meeting monthly, so we'll continue to do that. 
Um, just want to make sure that as the council continues to plan that, uh, you know, we get input from the committee uh, that'll help us all move the work forward. So I know like last year we looked at the, when the budget time came around, we reviewed the budget and council members gave some input. So, you know, just want to make sure that the, the council continues to act in that advisory uh, fashion or that advisory capacity for the the committee. So if there, you know, if there's anything that uh, Ms. Scott and other committee members are looking for from the council, any uh, input, perspective, things of that nature, just want to make sure that, uh, you know, we uh, make sure that we we facilitate that happening over the, you know, the course of the school year. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, and I was going to um, ask that again the budget is coming up and i would like the same as what the council did last year to um for um through you mr handy to facilitate where council members can send in emails based on what they'd like to see in the budget or where they feel that um we should be focusing or, or looking at or suggestions or anything really um, that we can look at as a committee and then take back to the full board as we have our budget discussions. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, and for the um, board members um, that are present, did any of you have any questions or anything that you wanted um, or, or information you wanted from the council or, or anything? All right, yeah, so for me, it's definitely um, the budget. What would the process for that be, Mr. Handy? Yes, yeah, so Ms. Scott, um, so really, uh, I can tell you from, uh, you know, my um, my position in BCPI as being a part of that budget planning, we're really just gonna start that work uh, starting next week. Um, so we'll start with, uh, you know, they, they brief us as budget managers on what we need to do to prepare uh, for this FY24 budget preparation. So we're really just starting that. Uh, so once we, uh, I go to those meetings and see what the calendar will be for developing of the budget, I'll be able to inform the advisory council. Um, I'll make sure I connect with you, Ms. Scott, to make sure that, you know, the information I receive is in alignment with what you, um, you know, have been receiving um, as a board member. And, you know, that way we'll have that budget uh, calendar that we can follow. So we can see, you know, I guess once the superintendent talked about his, uh, presents the budget, then we can comment on it. That's what we did last year. Um, if we want to do some work um, before then, we can look and see if that actually would be a good use of our time. Um, because I also want to follow that timeline that you all have as board members to give feedback on the budget. So I think once right. we get that um, right, once we get that calendar, we can we can start to to map it out a little bit more. Okay, great. And you all will be starting that next week. Um, the once the calendar you get that, is that something that could be shared with the council? Uh, just so they know the time constraints in which we're working. Yes, yes. I'll make sure I share that. I think uh, oftentimes I think it's actually on the public website, but I'll make sure I share it directly with the council members. Um, you know, once I have you know information I can share, I'll make sure I do that. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is there anything else? Any other questions? Um, this is Tiffany Stiff. Yes. So, Ms. Scott, I actually had a question for you related to your question about the handbook. So mm -hmm. you um, had a question about the handbook and expressed interest. And so I guess I just would like to hear from you if you had any thoughts or um, on maybe the format or timing or audience. What are things that for you, I guess, in hearing this idea that you would like to see? I'd just like to take that feedback. Yes, certainly. Um, I think that I like the idea of a brochure or like a, a handbook, but basically um, stating what equity is, why it's important, some of the things that you brought up, also the intersectionality of equity, and also my idea would be for it to be used as a resource that um, parents or teachers or whoever could look at to draw upon for ways to um, deal with situations that may be involving an inequity. That makes sense. So really something that could be useful as a guide. All right, I captured that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Did anyone else want to offer any any other feedback? OK, all right. Well, thank you everybody so much for participating. And oh, it looks like there's a, a question from Kristen Nielsen. Go ahead, Ms. Nielsen. Hi, I do have one quick question. It isn't related to the presentation. Would now be an OK time to ask? Yes. OK, um, I just saw that the price this, of school lunch fees for parents to give money to schools has gone up to two dollars and seventy five cents. And so for our families who are on low and fixed incomes, this has been very, very difficult. And I was wondering if our equity committee could look into that, please. I uh, believe it's uh, Dr. McComas, excuse me, not um, Dr. McComas, uh, Mr. Handy. Mr. Yes, Ms. Yeah, Ms. Scott, I'm here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Ms. Nelson, yep, I will actually, let me take that one. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for that. So that would be something that could be looked into and then see about that. Yes, I'll do that. Okay, all right. Um, it looks like there is a question in the chat. I'm not quite certain, but it says um, it's Mr. Excuse me, Ms. Javine Hardin would like to know how students who are immigrants and their families will benefit from this initiative. I'm not quite sure which initiative you were referring. OK, you can come on and ask your question, ma'am. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I was just wondering when I saw this presentation and all the uh, priorities that are uh, included, I'm just wondering how uh, students who are immigrants or families that are new to the county will be included or this is not the case and a misunderstanding. Sure. Well, um, equity includes everyone. It's um, the uh, when you make sure that all students and all families are treated in an equitable fashion, that includes everyone, students, immigrants, families, everyone is, is treated um, in a manner that's equitable. Um, this is Tiffany Stith. Ms. Scott, may I add on to that as well? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. OK, sure. So in one of the slides where. Um, uh, when I was talking about the equity action groups and we were talking about working in collaboration with existing groups or teams that support um, students, as well as one of their priorities is understanding all the different identities and intersectionality. So I have a more comprehensive list on, on my side. Um, I gave just a couple of examples, but um, for example, I spoke about children in poverty, but we could also look at homeless students, children with learning disabilities, ELL students, students who are below grade level academically, marginalized students of color, our LGBTQ community, and even immigrants. So that was one of our groups that we had looked at, as well as um, students who may be of a religion other than uh, Judeo-Christian and even for gender. So immigrants would definitely be, um, uh, students of immigrants would definitely be a part of this as far as if there's any issues related to academics. We talked about the um, academic achievement as well as just understanding what their needs are so that we can um, properly help support them. So that the goal is that we want all of our students um, doing well and being the best that they can. So immigrants would definitely still be included in this, even though I apologize if it wasn't express explicitly stated in the presentation or in my comments. Thank you. No, now I understand. Thank you. I missed that part of the um, already existing groups. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Thank you, Ms. Dan. You're welcome. Were there any other questions? All right, I wanted to make sure I didn't rush and <laughs> miss anyone's questions. So, and as always, if there's any questions that anyone may have, um, you can always um, email, send an email to us and um, we will respond back. So um, thank you very much for joining um, us today and for the, the council, all of your hard work and, and everything and for this presentation, which is very well done. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. So if there's no further business, then this meeting is now adjourned and I hope everyone has a good evening. Bye bye.